So we now we need to talk about EKG. So an EKG is it's called an electrocardiogram, and this kind of relates to everything we talked about. So if E KG, it's synonymous with an ECG. They're just they're the same thing. This is a measure of the total electrical activity that's emitted from the heart during a heartbeat or a series of heartbeats. And an EKG is going to look something like this. Like you'll have one heartbeat, okay, and then you'll have another heartbeat. EKG. Okay, so that's like two heartbeats. That's measured by an EKG. This is heartbeat number one, heartbeat number two. Each one of these little blips on the on the um, curve, they have a name. This guy is called the P wave. This region right here, this is the Q R S complex, and this guy right here, this is the T wave. So this is the measure of the electrical activity spreading through the heart during a heartbeat. What's the first thing, first part of a heartbeat? What's the first thing to contract? The atrium, okay? This first bump, the P wave, that corresponds to the atria depolarizing. This is the spread of the depolarization through the atria, which is synonymous with contraction. As soon as they depolarize, they contract. So this is atrial depolarization. What do you think the QRS complex corresponds to? What's the next thing that happens? Ventricles depolarizing. It's a big signal, a lot of muscle, right? And so you got a lot of muscles, these depolarizing, a larger bump. So this is the ventri ventricles depolarize. Now, right before those ventricles depolarize, the atria actually repolarize. When they repolarize, that just means they relax, okay? Depolarization, depolarization causes contraction, repolarization causes relaxation. You can't see atrial repolarization because it's a small signal and it was kind of swamped out by the large uh, QRS complex. But you can see the signal associated with the ventricles relaxing or repolarizing. What's that? Before we kind of move on, I want to give you some examples of what some um, different kind of basic uh, uh, irregular kind of EKGs look like. So here's a there's a normal one. I'll just draw a normal one in comparison right here. So let's see, I've got a normal EKG. That's like a normal one. Okay. You got P, Q R S, T, P, Q R S, T, P, Q R S, T. What would this be? So SA no is not going. Okay. We know that because what's it lacking? What bump? P wave. P wave. The atria aren't depolarizing. Okay. The ventricles are though, right? There, so you see the QRS, you see the T. What's, what else is different? Anything with heart rate? <coughs> but slower. It's because the AV nodes kick in. You know. That's a total heart block. Okay, a partial heart block, well, I just gave it to you. A partial heart block looks like this. <laughs> you see the difference? Is the SA node firing? Yeah, it act it's actually firing every time. That's it, so you got the P wave, P wave, P wave, P wave. But oftentimes that P wave is not followed by yeah, a QRS complex. So the SA node is firing, but it's not receiving, that's the AV node is not receiving that signal every time. Yeah. This is a partial heart block. And that's like a total heart block. And this is an easy one. What would be this? Just a crazy line. B fit. That's what B fit looks like.
check me if I'm, if I'm right. Aether would probably look like this really erratic low pulses, but followed by QRS complexes that happen at about 40 beats per minute. That's what I would imagine. AFib looks like. Could be wrong. Check on, check me on that. Okay, <laughs> back over here. This chart, we're gonna we're gonna fill in this chart with a couple more pieces of information. When did the atria start contracting? What letter? Right around P. They depolarize, they contract. So right here, I'm gonna draw a box here. And this means the atria are gonna start contracting. When did the atria relax? Before Q, or like right, right about Q. So then we're gonna say a box from Q to there, the atria are contracting. The atria contract. All right, when do the um, ventricles start contracting? When they when, what causes the ventricles to contract? Depolarization, which happens at QRS, right? So right around here, right after the ventricles depolarize, the ventricles are gonna contract. And then when do the ventricles relax? Yeah, right, right here. So boom, 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 ventricles contract. When are the AV valves closed? What causes the AV valves, this valve and this valve, what causes that to close? When the ventricles contract, right? And they and they close right after the ventricles contract, right? Like as soon as they start contracting, those AV valves slam shut. So we can say, oh, right here, the ventricles contract, right about here. The, um, that's when those AV valves, they close. Right on there. And then when do the AV valves open back up? When the ventricles relax. Okay? So the only time the AV valves are closed are when the ventricles are contracted. And then when they relax, they open back up. Okay? So we can go right from here. So right after they stop contracting, that's when the AV valves are closed. And otherwise, the AVs are open. What about the um, semilunar valve? Semilunar valves are the combination of the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve. Yes. Okay. So they're only open when the ventricles are contracting. All right. But come on, let's think about this. This left ventricle starts to contract. We know that as soon as it starts to contract, AV valve closes. Does the aortic valve open right away? No, nope, because the pressure has to skyrocket all the way up to 80. So we'll draw a line right about here. And before this, semilunar was closed. Then it finally opens. Blood pushes through. When does that semilunar close again? When the ventricle relaxes. So it contracts, it builds up pressure, finally shoots blood through, blood's going through, and then when the ventricle relaxes, pressure goes down to zero, that valve closes. So we'll say right here when the ventricle relaxes, boom, right there. We're gonna say, all right, where is, um, what makes the first heart sound, the love sound? AV valve's closing. Oh, well that's right here, that's easy. And what causes the second heart sound? It's another valve closing. Semi-linear closing. Oh, and that happens right here. So, um, and if you were to extend this out, this guy is gonna um, extend all the way out to here. And this green would be right apart here. There. So this is, the reason I made this chart is this is where 
the heart can be deceptively tricky. You know, like you can sit here and be like, oh, okay, that makes sense, that makes sense, right? It all kind of makes sense. But when you try to put it together in a chart, that's when it gets deceptively hard. And I find that that's one, um, one thing that kind of tricks my students up sometimes is that they'll just think you know it, and then you walk into the test, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is a lot trickier than I thought. 